Hi everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. Thank you for coming back in. I'm making a cake, a bunt cake that has a lot of steps to it. So we're just going to do it step by step. And then I'm going to turn you off and do another step and then turn you back on and tell you what I've done. This is called a hummingbird upside down poke bunt cake. Although I don't think I'm going to be doing any poking. We'll see. Now the first thing you do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I think that's 180 Celsius. Alright, then you're generously going to, you have to have at least a 12 cup bunt pan. You're going to spray it generously with the baking spray that's got the flour in it. Then down in the bottom of this pan you're going to have uh, melt two tablespoons of butter and pour it evenly over the bottom. Then on top of that goes one-third a packed cup of brown sugar that you evenly distribute. And then it says to cut in half six sliced pineapples and putting them close together they go in the bottom. Well the only way I could get six in was to make two rows. So then you're going to set this aside and we'll be back. We still have our pan you know off to the side with the pineapple and brown sugar and butter and all of that in it, our bunt pan, that has to be at least 12 cup bunt pan. Now this is our second step. Here you're gonna, gonna use a box of uh, yellow cake mix. It says use um, Betty Crocker, but I didn't. I used Duncan Hines, and it doesn't matter. It must be a Betty Crocker recipe. One box of cake mix. Now into that you put one cup of mashed bananas, and it says two. Medium. Well, two medium didn't make a cup for me, so I went on to three, and it made a little over a cup, so I just used it. Then you're going to put the reserve juice from your can of um, pineapple slices that you cut in half. You put a half a cup of the pineapple juice in there. You put three eggs. Uh, a teaspoon and a half of ground cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and I ground my own. But if all you have is the pre-ground, use it. Now, hummingbird cake has pecans and walnuts in it. This recipe didn't call for it to be put in the cake, but I wanted it in there, so I've got about a half a cup of each in there. And I'm going to mix this for two minutes and pour it into that bunt pan <clears throat> um, and it's going to bake 40 to 45 minutes at 350 until a tester comes out clean. My cake is done. It took exactly 45 minutes. And the next step I kind of modified because I thought it would be too sweet. You're supposed to take a half a cup, a quarter of a cup of the reserve pineapple juice, a cup of um, sweetened condensed milk, not evaporated milk, sweetened condensed milk, mix them together, and after your cake has cooled, I 15 minutes you pour this over the cake you punch holes in it halfway down and you guide this liquid in but what I did was I thinned out that um, sweetened condensed milk because it just is too sweet I didn't want a real sweet cake like that I just didn't. So I thinned it out with whole milk and I tasted it 
to see if it came, if it tasted like I thought it should. And it did. So you poke holes halfway down with a wooden skewer that's, or, or um, stick that's got a hefty um, end to it and wipe it off so that it doesn't bunch up a whole lot. Now, this cake in the pan is going in the refrigerator for up to two hours. All right, our cake chilled for two hours. It actually chilled longer than that because it was late when I finished the cake and Sam wasn't up to uh, critique it. So, we're going to cut it now. And there were two complaints that I read about this cake. One was that it was too sweet with the um, <clears throat> uh, sweetened condensed milk, which is why I mixed it with whole milk. And the other was that it wouldn't stay together. So we're checking that out right now. It also calls for a topping. I'm not going to put a topping on it because I don't think it needs it. But I will include the topping uh, recipe. In the directions. Let me give you a nice close-up of this cake. And let's see what Sam thinks about it. Hummingbird cake. This is a upside down hummingbird cake and they call it a poke bunt cake because you do poke holes in it. But I do know you like pineapple. Oh yeah, I love it. Very interesting. Pineapple, bananas, taste of nuts. Now this one's super moist here. Yeah, it's got, you know, a lot of stuff in it. Very good. Can you taste the pineapple? Oh, sure. Yeah. Last time I had this cake was at a, a rancher's convention out in Texas. And these uh, ranchers were talking about the size of their ranches and all. And this one guy said, well, I've got 3,000 acres down around Houston. And this one guy said, well, I've got 10,000 down around Corpus Christi. And they asked this one guy, I said, where, he said, I got a hundred acres. And they said, wait a minute, these other people got thousands and you got a hundred. Why are you so happy about that? And he, he said, where is your land? He said, downtown Dallas. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Yeah, this is super moist, super flavorful. Texture's great. Got two kinds of nuts here. Yeah, it does. Can you taste the pineapple? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You sure can. It's not overwhelming, but you can taste the banana and the pineapple. So if you like banana and pineapples, this would be the cake for you. Isn't well, that's what makes it a hummingbird cake, plus the nuts. Okay. Oh, well, I, if I ate another piece, I believe I could fly like a hummingbird. <laughs> well, I hope you can. Yeah, no, it's it's really great, and it's a little different from your, you know, normal cake, and well worth trying. Mm hmm Well, all right, guys, thank you for coming in, spending part of your day with me. I always appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the recipe. I tried to simplify it for you. And until next time, 
You take care, and God bless. Yeah.